fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. Several shots were fired as President Kennedy's motorcade passed through downtown Dallas. None of us will ever forget this day, yet we go forward to defend freedom and all that is good and just in our world. Welcome to the Hagman Daily Show, weekdays 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern Time. And now your hosts, Joe Hagman and John Robertson. Hello and welcome to this Wednesday edition of the Hagman Daily Show. Joe Hagman here, going to be flying solo today as John is uh, finishing some dental work that he had uh, had started to get done before he left for the Red Pill Expo. And uh, he is not going to be with us today. But Stephen Menking is going to be joining us about halfway through the program. And uh, there's a lot of things going on. I don't know really where to start. Trump is in uh, meetings with uh, much of the European leaders, the NATO leaders. And there is some headlines, interesting uh, comments about that. Uh, We have seen this continued push. Uh, The only story I posted on Hagman Report today was about comedian Michelle Wolfe. Uh, and her Netflix special saying, God bless abortions. And, uh, you know, this is just one of the things that makes me really upset, really frustrated to see the attitude of these people. Uh, We know what abortion is. It is the killing of a, a child in the womb, and they can, however they want to justify it in their own minds, try to change the language of what a baby actually is. It is murder. But Comedian Michelle Wolf offered what she termed a salute to abortions on her Sunday show during her Netflix show, The Break with Michelle Wolf. Wolf devoted her closing segment to a sketch in which she dressed in the American flag, uh, leotard, and offered cheers for abortions. God bless abortions and God bless America, she exclaimed at one point, The Hill reported. Women, if you need an abortion, get one, Wolf said. If you want an abortion, get one. It's up to you. It doesn't have to be a big deal. It's about $300. Uh, That's like six movie tickets. But the reactions to her, uh, what is deemed a a TV show, uh, her salute to abortions have uh, really been far and wide. And she has created a lot of controversy, controversy, and rightfully so. I mean, when you have a group of people... And this is applies not only to comedians and to Hollywood, but this applies to the all the different inst- American institutions that have been systematically uh, changed into this collective hive mind, say communist, socialist, satanic mindset, and they've been spewing this propaganda. Uh, you know, more and more, it gets worse and worse with each day that goes by for the last 50 years. Well, ever since the, really, the invention of the TV, uh, was it ever even wholesome? And the purposes of the whole Hollywood entertainment system, uh, system, yeah, system, I guess you can say, is to continue to propagate this misconception that the news media is now involved in, uh, which is that they are the majority, these globalist, uh, globally minded people who love abortion and love open borders and communism and socialism. It, it is a disease of the soul. It really is. And it's a spiritual disease. And we're going to talk more about that later. And we talk about it so much. It is, uh, it gets, it, it gets old with, with the repetition of having to call it out for what it is, but somebody has to continue to do so. And there are some great people out there that continue to do so in the alternative media and on social media platforms, YouTubes and whatnot. So that is good. But, um, I guess we can talk about politics we can talk about what Trump's doing, but I got a little bit of an interesting story that I'd like to share, uh, which I found interesting. So I have a friend. And I stopped over at his house after a show late last week, I believe it was. And uh, there was another person in his driveway who had a a brand new, I think it was a 2018 or 2019 truck with a key 
uh, push start, or keyless push start, push to start car. And for whatever reason, while he was parked in my friend's driveway, he, he could not get the thing to start. He couldn't get the keyless remote to work. Well, since then, there have been three or four other instances where anybody who has a keyless entry and is parked within 20 yards of my friend's vehicle, it disables their uh, their keyless entry system. And it is different makes and models. So, uh, But we're trying to, fa- I was doing some research today, trying to figure out what in the world would cause or, or could be on his car that would interfere with the uh, transmission of the signal from the communication device of the keyless starter uh, to the point where these starters are malfunctioning when they're anywhere near his car. And I can't, uh, the, the closest thing I've gotten to is uh, uh, as far as electronic interference is somebody had a similar experience with a keyless car parked on a hilltop where there were several cell towers. But so is this guy's, I mean, what's so special about this car uh, that is, it is doing this? And what's even worse is the guy works at the, the local mall here. And so when he parks his car, if, if anybody with a keyless entry parks near him, uh, they can't start their car. It disables their remote. So that's a really weird story. And, I, and that's kind of, uh, I've been, as I said, reading, doing some research on that and uh, read articles, you know, eight reasons why your keyless entry might not be working. And all of them were uh, none of them had to do with interference. It all had to do with uh, your batteries dying. You're not doing it right, this or that. But I've only only found one on a Tesla forum uh, who has dealt with their car. And I'm sure there's many other out there. So I haven't given this a lot of time. But uh, I'm wondering what it is that's on this guy's car or what it is about the car that is uh, it is causing these keyless entry systems to malfunction. And the reason, the only way he found out about uh, it being his car is because now that they've established that whatever is going on is happening in his vehicle, uh, there was his mother or one of his family members has the same kind of setup in their car. And when they were in his driveway, they couldn't get it started again. And he said, you know, this is crazy. This is the third or fourth time in a matter of days this has happened. So he pulled his car out of the driveway. And as he backed his car out of the driveway and pulled it into the street, uh, the, the lady was able to start her car. So we've established that his car is basically what is interfering with uh, these these signals. But what is it about the car that is causing it? I don't know yet. But for whatever reason, I have this fascination and don't want to figure it out. So I'm going to be uh, doing a number of different things that I can do. Maybe even bring Tech Eric in on this, see if he can't pinpoint what it is. He's good at that kind of, that kind of stuff. But I just thought that was, <coughs> excuse me, uh, a little change of pace <coughs> and... Uh, something different you know you don't come across stories like that uh very often and it's uh interesting when when uh you see things like that happen and that brings up another point you know technology all the different ways that that technology can be used against us and is going to be and and is used against us um you know if people really started to to devote we we have a lot this younger generation who understand computers at a much greater level than uh anybody who's even my age who uh you know grew up when the internet was really just coming to life. I don't remember my family having a computer till I was, I think, in eighth grade. And, and that's when, you know, AOL started back in the, the 90s or whatever uh, with that dial-up internet. But there's a new generation of people out there who are able to uh, basically just under learn that from a, a level at a young age how, you know, programming and these different uh, functions of computers, which uh, it, it's a big interconnected, you know, backdoor system and you can hack virtually into anything. And, you know, how, how fast technology is advancing. It's amazing to see uh, and understand that soon everybody's going to be so technologically minded that it is going to change the whole face of our society. These people are going to, these next generations are going to want to merge with machines. We're like, as people like me, uh, who understand not only the spiritual ramifications of that, but even just at a human level, taking religion out of it, uh, I, I still don't under, understand it, why you'd want to, uh, why I guess I can see, but but at least from the spiritual standpoint, I cannot understand uh, that these people don't see it exactly what has been prophesied about for thousands of years 
coming to fruition and these people, uh, it can't happen fast enough for some of them. And this is the same mindset, you know, that it's the same spirit that we see, uh, that has been, you know, slowly and subtly, uh, destroying our society, destroying us really, uh, which in turn, we destroy our own society from there. Uh, and, and we permit these things to happen. And it's a cocktail of reasons why we are, and we are the way we are from, you know, you can argue the, the dangers of vaccines and how much uh, increase of these um, uh, chemicals that have been allowed to be put in our body through our food or, you know, fluoride in our water, uh, the, the chemicals that are, are used in the air, the, the pesticides, the rounds up, the roundups and the pharmacological age that we, uh, you know, find ourselves in. We see all this huge increase of, of diseases and cancers and, and this, just the sickness in society. And it all has to be connected. So I, and from the medical standpoint of, of wanting to keep your genes, you know, pure and be disease free, I understand the technological uh, uh, reasoning behind that. But to make yourself or attempt to make yourself immortal in this human body, uh, to me, that's just an idea that's lost. And I, I cannot wrap my mind around why anybody would want to do that, I guess, with no uh, belief or, or uh uh, understanding of a spiritual afterlife or a will uh, uh, of ignorance towards that, um, then yes, and then the people who at a much darker level want to live apart from uh, what the Lord has established, and that is, you know, basically that is satanic in nature. Uh, that that's the only other reason I can see why people would want to do this. But we are, it's insane, and and the the technological uh, uh, positions we find ourselves in today with the merger of the medical industry with uh, technology and electronic health records and all these devices, you know, people think uh, you know, Fitbit is a good example where uh, just imagine something that is more permanent than you just carrying it around. But, uh, you know, something that has the same functions, it can monitor your uh, blood, even it can check your heart rate, it can uh, detect diseases, that kind of, of technology is what we're talking about. And they, they want to make it mandatory. And the whole reason I bring all this up is because each day we seem to you know, focus solely on uh, certain headlines and issues of the day. And uh, much of the news is centered around President Trump and the, the controversies that are created or, or surrounded by or, or started by, you know, these these communists and these Satanists, whatever they are. But it's we, we have to step back from the daily grind of the news headlines and, and every little detail that happens uh, in each story and look at the bigger picture and where we're headed as a society. And we talk about this often, and, and as much as we believe uh, President Trump is doing right by you know, the American Constitution and, you know, by trying to restore America uh, with, with uh, actual ideas and, and uh, putting, you know, words into action, whereas we only see words from, from the politicians, it's a good change of pace and, and it can't be done uh, by him alone. But as he is going through his journey trying to change things uh, for the better. We have this whole deep state uh, and globalist apparatus that is uh, continuing, you know, to charge forward with the uh, these other agendas, whether they're economic, whether they're technological, whether they're medical. These other systems of control uh, are continuing uh, full steam of head, you know, in their uh, a quest for a, a uh, you know, one world utopian society where nobody has to work and everybody gets free food and money and, uh, you know, not equal uh, um, opportunity, but equal outcomes. And that is the how the one world system is uh, going to be built and is built. But, you know, it's um, we, we see and we have to fight against it at every level. But it is it is too big this and this is what it's so fascinating about prophecy. When you look at something in prophecy, like uh, what is described as the Leviathan, and, and it's in a, it's talked about in Job, it's talked about in Isaiah, and what I, and some people think it's an actual monster of the sea. Uh, it, it's a, to me that's what you know this government is is become. Uh, it's a Leviathan. It's it's a it's a mechanism that's so big. Uh, the, the the United States federal system and this global system, that it's so big. It's so entrenched now. Uh, that it is just eventually going to overtake everything. And if you read the description, I believe it's in Job 38, about, it's either Job 38 or 41. Uh, it's, a, it's a chapter completely about Le Le the Leviathan, the monster. And that is very similar. That story is very similar to what we see happening in our society today. And it is almost impossible to fight on an individual level 
uh, and and th- these people have used these institutions of power uh, uh, for uh, evil reasons and evil people have uh, obtained positions of power and it's so consolidated that it, it's all working uh, towards this you know this end time system and all these headlines that we see daily uh, are just confirmations of that I guess to, to put it in a, in a better way but let's deal with some of these uh, headlines before we do bring Stephen Menking on. And President Trump, again, as we said, is traveling. Uh, He is meeting with NATO leaders. And the report that is at the head of Drudge, which is now Yahoo News, it was a Bloomberg article, uh, says the following, U.S. President Donald Trump traded barbs with German Chancellor Angela Merkel at a tense NATO summit Wednesday after he accused Berlin of being captive to Russia and demanded it immediately step up defense spending. The two met in Brussels, the, uh, I'm sorry, the two day meet in Brussels is shaping up as the alliance's most difficult in years with Europe and the U S engaged in a bitter trade spat and Trump demanding that NATO allies reimburse Washington for defending the continent. And, you know, a lot of people on the left, it doesn't matter what the president does. It doesn't matter. Uh, you know, how, how good his policies are. It doesn't matter, uh, you know, what he's able to accomplish, as, uh, even uh, like with something like his North Korea uh, is moving towards peace. The, the media will tear him down, and that's just expected at, at this point. And they're trying to spin what is going on in uh, with these NATO meetings as somehow framing it like uh, President Trump and Putin have this uh, secret relationship, and Putin is the only ally uh, or, or at least in Trump's mind, the only real ally he has. And they're they're painting this uh, misconception to the American public that somehow uh, uh, Trump is, is, you know, cozying up only to Russia and is alienating the rest of the NATO partners, which is not true at all. And uh, anybody who actually looks into what is being said and what is being done uh, between the NATO countries, the U.S. and Russia, uh, it's quite the opposite. And I don't want to get into all the details of it because uh, it's, I mean, these people just lie constantly. And we uh, see just even the Supreme Court pick that we have been uh, uh, talking about the last few days. Newsbusters has a report on this. And we actually, on Hagman Report tonight, have a a new Newsbusters writer coming on, uh, I believe at 7.30, so check that out. But on Newsbusters.com, networks tout Democrats launching all-out war against the Supreme Court pick Kavanaugh. On Wednesday, network morning show coverage of President Trump's Supreme Court nominee Brent Kavanaugh dropped off significantly with a combined airtime of less than two minutes. However, ABC, NBC, and CBS broadcast still manage to use that brief amount of reporting to tout Democrats launching all-out war against the federal judge. The president's pick, Kavanaugh, met with key senators on Capitol Hill Thursday, I'm sorry, Tuesday, and was joined by Vice President Pence as Democrats zero in on their main arguments. White House is pretty confident, but Democrats are promising the fight of a lifetime. That, according to George Stephanopoulos, I don't know what they can do. Nancy Pelosi said, you know, she was going to fight uh, to keep do everything she in her power to keep Kavanaugh out. The only problem is Nancy Pelosi works in the House of Representatives. She is not in the Senate. Therefore, she is not part of the confirmation process. So the only thing she can do is just continue to run her mouth uh, with no ability to have any action uh, behind it. But anyway... Uh, We see the news coverage of what is happening with NATO. There are already ABC and other networks worry Trump is blowing up NATO, taking problems to a whole new level. Again, ABC's Good Morning America, foreign correspondent. This guy is another treasure. And this is like the fourth time I have talked about him on the show. And the only reason I remember who he is is because of his name. And it's Terry Morin. Moran, M-O-R-A-N. But every time I read it, I want to say Terry Moron because I think that's the 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 uh, uh, mindset that he's coming from, or at least spewing out over network television, is that of a moron. And it's it, the anti-Trump uh, rhetoric and hatred just bleeds through the TV screen when this guy speaks on anything uh, having to do with the president. But that's he's ABC's foreign news correspondent, and he hyped President Trump's rebuke of a European ally at this week's NATO summit as an unprecedented act of betrayal against our allies. 
while acknowledging that past presidents have had plenty of problems with our European allies, Morin judged Trump as taking those problems to a whole new level, wondering was he trying to reform NATO or blow it up? And I don't know if we want to listen to any of this, but uh, here's part of the report. Good morning, Robin. Well, this NATO summit is sure off to a rocky start. You know, American presidents for decades have had plenty of problems with European allies. But judging from this morning, President Trump is already taking that to a whole new level. It was just a breakfast meeting with NATO's leadership, but the coffee got cold as President Trump erupted to reporters and came out swinging at a major U.S. ally. Germany is totally controlled by Russia. The president hurling a stinging critique there of Germany's recent $12 billion gas pipeline deal with Russia, a country NATO calls the greatest threat to the alliance. I think uh, it's very sad when Germany makes a massive oil and gas deal with Russia where you're supposed to be guarding against Russia and Germany goes out and pays billions and billions of dollars a year to Russia. Top U.S. and NATO officials sat there squirming. Despite these differences, we have always been able to unite around our core task uh, to protect and defend each other because we understand that we are stronger together than uh, apart. But President Trump wasn't buying any of it. Germany, as far as I'm concerned, is captive to Russia because it's getting so much of its energy from Russia. Mm. So we're supposed to protect Germany. Right, so. but they get Okay, let's uh, talk about this for a little bit because this is pretty interesting, uh, some of the sound bites. And I hope you guys could hear the audio clip I played well. I know uh, I, I have to get a new Mac. My Mac has been having so many problems. But anyway, back to the issue. If you heard that sound clip, um, you heard in there one of the biggest beefs the president has is with a massive oil and gas pipeline from Russia into Germany. And as you know, NATO is uh, an alliance of European and uh, American and other nations that is a, basically a coalition of, of the willing, as George Bush said, uh, but he was talking about uh, the, something else. But the NATO nations are uh, a coalition of nations uh, who are in partnership in a common interest in safety and security. Uh, and if, you know, one nation is attacked, we'll say uh, it, it puts all, uh, you know, these other nations uh, in a position where they have to go to war to defend whatever nation is attacked. And, and Russia is not part of NATO. So looking at this from the perspective of the NATO countries versus the rest of the world, President Trump is saying, well, if they are uh, you know, one of the biggest security threats to NATO, to the Europe uh, and European Union, why are uh, you entangling yourself with them in a way that puts you in, a, in under control of Russia as far as your energy concerns? Uh, uh, go so uh, that is his point there and you see the 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 globalist politicians who uh, only have you know the right smooth words to say uh, you know talking about well there are many issues and we need to worry about peace and safety and just all this very vague uh, nonsense that people like to hear the the, the fluffiness of, of the words uh, you know Obama was a smooth talker but what did he actually do that was good for the American people these people are are smooth talkers and they can uh, you know, sell ideas or whatever uh, through the entangling of words. But what's different about President Trump is, uh, is, is as elitist as he might have been uh, or is before he became president, he always says it like it is. And maybe it's that New York side of him. Maybe it's, you know, growing up in New York City. Um, and, and a lot of people believe that's it. But he says it like it is. And he doesn't, uh, you know, try to uh, uh, he doesn't overcompensate through trying to have a huge vocabulary and, and say the, the, the perfect thing the right way. He is just get to the point kind of a person. And that type of personality apparently uh, is, is, you know, uh, what this reporter is saying, he's trying to blow up NATO. It's that type of boldness uh, from the president and, uh, you know, his clearness, at least in what he wants, that is bothering these people. So if we, if we actually are honest with ourselves, this is not a problem of, of Trump being some kind of bully. This is a problem of po politicians uh, and their policies never accomplishing anything good except for themselves and the, uh, the, the, you know, the people that they enrich. Uh, and nothing for the, the people. And this is somebody actually trying to fight uh, with normal common sense ideas. And in a world of insanity, I guess that is insane to, to be the only one with the common sense and the uh, the actual ability to put the actions behind the words. And I think that's where we're running into a lot of, uh, or at least that's a, a point of contention 
with a lot of these reporters. They just don't like the crudeness, the boldness, and the simplicity of President Trump. And they think it, it is diminishing the uh, legitimacy of the office of the presidency, which is a joke at this point, because what do we have to lose? We see our country moving towards this, you know, under Bush, they tried to make create the North American Union like they have the European Union. And they're, they're going to try to continue to do these. And from the League of Nations after World War I to the United Nations in World War II, these people have had globalist aspirations for the last hundred years. And they've tried and tried and tried. And they've got po portions of the country through com or the world through communism. They got portions of it through, you know, twisted, uh, uh, tyrannical democracy. I mean, look what's going on in Britain. Theresa May is about to lose her uh, her leadership role over there because of her unwillingness to implement the people's will and break away from the European Union via Brexit. The There is coming up a vote of no confidence, and I don't have the information in front of me. What I do know is just from a little bit of what I read yesterday, and there's a, a Paul Joseph Watson video where he does a great breakdown of the Brexit situation. And this is something that's been ongoing for a number of years. There was a referendum. The people of Britain voted to break away from the European Union. And ever since, it has been a political nightmare. Uh, and they've been stonewalling at every turn. They don't want, the, the EU does not want to see uh, Britain leave, but uh, that's what the people voted for. But the leaders are not willing to implement the actions to actually separate. And this has caused a big problem. It's caused this vote of no confidence and, and a n number of resignations from Theresa May's staff uh, and government. So uh, they're going to hold a vote of no confidence. And if the uh, if they come back and, and it does go that way, they will hold some kind of election and they are going to have a new leader. So what does that mean for Brexit? It depends on which leader uh, gets that spot. So it's very important that if you want to see uh, exactly what it is that is going on in Europe, that you check out that Paul Joseph Watson video, because he is probably one of the uh, the smartest people in the alternative media who lives over there, who uh, has been has been covering this with such a, a regular a, a regularness to it, uh, obviously because he lives there, but he also works for Infowars and, and he's up on these issues. And we see that uh, he is always right on the money with his analysis. And that this video is no different. Uh, very important for the future of Europe. And also, you know, with the with one of the advantages of the internet doing broadcasts like this, is that we are able to send the or we're not limited to you know a radio tower for uh, people who can hear our show. It's not like the old days where if you were in range of, of certain radio stations, you could listen to uh, certain shows. This is the internet. And you whether you live in Europe or Antarctica or wherever, the uh, you're still allowed to download this show. Uh, it, it's global. You can do it anywhere. And uh, we do have a global audience. And these things are important to uh, American policies as well. So uh, I don't know what Steven is going to talk about. He just sent me a message ready when you are. So let's give him a call. I know those sounds come through on the broadcast. I got, I got to learn how to fix that, but we'll, uh, we'll see Steven. It's great to have you on. Uh, you and me again are, are flying solo today. And, uh, I started out the show talking about a number of things, uh, a little bit from the Trump NATO meetings, played a little sound, a few sound bites of, uh, what's going on there and then how it's being reported. And we also have been talking about the, uh, uh, the constant, the Leviathan in, in, in the Old Testament, in Job and in Isaiah, how it's described versus this system of, of global governance through all these different institutions that we see that continue to encroach on uh, the uh, old guard, the old way, uh, and trying to usher in this new world order system and how it's basically impossible to fight against all these different institutions and, and uh, how they're compartmentalized. And what that looks like over time and how we're moving uh, now towards this technological revolution, which is going to reshape society again and all this moving towards that end times one world government system. So, but anywhere you want to go or anything you want to get into, uh, let's do it. Well, it's uh, quite the introduction there, Cho. Uh, I know you have your hands full over there running uh, running solo here, but more than capable of handling it. First, a quick sound check. I got my microphone back, so am I Darth sounds Vader good. right now, or is no, it okay? No, no, it sounds normal. 
All right, fantastic. We'll we'll see if uh, we'll see if that sticks. If it if there's an issue, let me know. But it's been true to form so far. Um, kind of a weird kind of experience, but we don't have to get into that. We can talk about some of these more important and pressing issues. Let's I think it. a good place to start when we're thinking about all of the different kind of prongs and this system of complexity and this system of complexity that is built uh, for the purpose of evil and at various levels and under various reflections and guises it, it appears as something that is designed or purposed for good but deep down it is from the pit of hell essentially and when we look at these different machinations, these different personalities, these different figures, these different organizations, it can, Joe, to your point, feel as if one against one voice against that kind of power is insufficient. And to a large extent, that's an appropriate conclusion. However, there are are many different resources that people have at their disposal and at a time when it feels like all of the secular and normal resources have fallen short we should not neglect the spiritual resources that we have the riches that are available to christ jesus um, to us through christ jesus not for the sake of our own personal aggrandizement or advancement but rather to petition to pray to seek the will of God and to move his hand. So as I'm, as I'm want to do, why don't we start with a Psalm? I had this one circled for, for such an occasion. So let's take a look at Psalm 139, 139 from the new King James version is I'm what I'm going to be reading out of. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know, my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You have hedged me behind and before you and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light around me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you. But the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book they were all written, the days fashioned for me when as yet there were none of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Oh, that you would slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore, you bloodthirsty men. For they speak against you wickedly. Your enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate them, O Lord, who hate you? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. And see if there is any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Now, Joe, as we run through that psalm, what is really incredible are the different connections that this makes to so much of what we're talking about. If we're talking about the Supreme Court, we're talking about Roe v. Wade, we're talking about the status of the unborn and the rights that they have or do not have in certain cases. And in this psalm, we find a pointed statement of the idea that personhood and humanity begins before birth. And this is what the psalmist David is speaking about through that middle segment. We also get the reassurance that God is with us and that God is always present. Many times when we are encountering darkness, it can feel as if 
you know, where where is God? Where is the light that is supposed to be here? But nothing escapes the grasp of our Lord. He is omnipotent and omniscient. He knows everything that's going on. And, you know, it's, it's better for us that we're not in that position because it's with a full eye to all of the evil that's taking place. It's only God's long suffering and his mercy that has allowed us whatever time we have to walk and to work and to love and to preach the gospel and to do whatever we can do for the sake of his kingdom. Because if we, if I, I'll speak for myself only here, if I were in the position to to judge and I had a full understanding and knowledge of the evil that was going on, then it would have been enough. Um, you know, there, there would have been more than one, more than one flood, if you know what I mean. But I thank God that I am yeah. not in that position and that God's long suffering and endless mercy is available to us for those who are reaching out. Now, it is true there will come a time where no man can work, where there are those who will be beyond uh, salvation, where they will have made a choice and have worshipped and gone in a different direction and neglected and scorned and been wrathful towards God. And towards the end of this, some you get this pointed language that many would talk about as being uh, hateful in part because it's using the word hate many times. And yeah. in this situation, we are counting the enemies of God our enemies. And then in the New Testament, we also have the command from Jesus to love our enemies. And that also is a challenging thing because what does that actually mean what does that look like on one hand right. you have many people who espouse the view that uh, love is to tolerate everything and on the other hand you have people who espouse the view that love is to um, share the love of god and to speak the truth of the word of god with no reservations to tell it exactly like it is because any deception any uh, unrighteousness is an indication of a lack of love. If you permit someone to do something that is wrong and that will have tremendous negative consequences for them, then how loving could that be? And this divide goes through our land. This divide goes through the world. But ultimately, at the end of this psalm, David is speaking to the Lord on a, on a personal level. On a personal level, and I think that is where we would be wise to always circle back to in these trying times. He says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. Other translations say thoughts, fears. And see if there's any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. And David is imploring God to search his heart, to cleanse him of unrighteousness. And we need to do the same thing in our time because without that kind of relationship, without that kind of cleansing, without that, that forgiveness that we, that we can receive, that we must receive, then we will not be equipped. We could talk all day about spiritual warfare principles, but if we are if we're not living right, if we're not pressing in, if we're not asking God truly, openly, honestly to, to search our hearts and to change our hearts, if we're not mournful over, uh, over our own missteps with godly sorrow and then understanding and understanding the forgiveness of God and being able and empowered through the Holy Spirit to pick ourselves back up, then we're just not going to be able to deal with the flurry of different news. And Joe, I don't, I don't know about you, but I mean, when I'm looking at all this stuff and I spend less time with it than, than you do, even, even the time that I spend, I can only, it, it it's much less, I don't have the bandwidth or the capacity to spend several hours looking at, looking at comments or reading articles and news and everything else like that. It just, you know, I would... I need to spend time with that so that I stay informed and, and understand. But the but the level of destructive information that's deliberately put there to harm people yes. is is a is a real um, it's a, it's a challenge for me because if it weren't I I can tell you Joe how I would how I would treat how I would have treated this if I were fully aware of it before before I was saved. 
I would have been enraged all all the time, constantly enraged. And I would have been out there on the forums trying to like convince people with arguments because like clear obviously if if something makes sense, if it's a good argument, then you should you should accept that. If it's if it's not a good argument, then you shouldn't accept it. But you know, now that I've been walking with the Lord for a few years, I understand the spiritual mechanics, and I am f- so fortunate and blessed that I keep my eyes focused on the Lord because I pray that God would keep my eyes focused on Him. I don't have the strength to do that. There's too much. There's too much going on. There's too much uh, going around, and and I'll see this from. Uh, from people on all sides, it's like, all right, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna pop off about something, yeah, go, I mean, you can you can pop off, but you know, ask yourself, what is what is that accomplishing? What is it doing? And by the same token, you know, people have to be authentic, Joe. I know your voice is valued in part, in large part, because of your authenticity. You're not. Uh, you're not putting on a show. You're leaving it all out there, and you're and you're expressing yourself, including um, including positive and negative emotions, and at times frustrations with uh, with dealing with the situations that we're thrust into. And fair enough, there's an overabundance of things to be frustrated about. Um, my my point is that if we are in the Word of God, and I know this is a bit repetitious because it feels like I say this every single time I come on with you guys, if we're not doing our spiritual due diligence to prioritize the relationship with God on a on a daily basis, then the the tide is such that we'll be swept away. And what I have found when I look back, I'm like, all right, well, what's what's going on in the last week, the last month, the last year? So much of the heightened state of emotion that people that people get into, some for bad reason, other for others for perfectly justifiable reasons. That is a tremendous uh, biophysiological wear and tear on on your body. It's literally not healthy. And while it is important to have a, a righteous kind of anger in many different situations and to have that spur you on to a deeper relationship with God and to uh, and to navigating the, the world in a more efficacious way, we also can't succumb to that essentially a psychological tactic of creating a state of mind in the populace where people are so keyed up and so used to being keyed up that it can't be dialed down without even like experiencing withdrawal symptoms. Like if your adrenal glands are firing on all cylinders all the time and then you try and rest, you just can't. And so, you know, we get into a scenario where the decisions that people make end up being informed by their state of mind more so than either their relationship with God or the facts on the ground or anything else like that. And that's when people either turn against themselves or they can be herded uh, into, into a pathway where they can be utilized and taken advantage of for the purpose of advancing evil. And so we see all these different kinds of scenarios, to, to put it in concrete terms. We see manufactured protests at the at President Trump's Supreme Court nomination. And we're not surprised by that. We see media that creates a framing of the scenario that makes it seem like it's some huge protest and it's really just a few hundred people who got um, who got paid to be there. And that's a that's a speculation, but it's an informed one. Um, and you know, we see how are people still falling for this narrative? And I think, and this is just a supposition, but it's based anecdotally on various kind of things like the like the walk away campaign and and people being more vocal about saying, you know, we're not we're just not buying it anymore. And I think the electorate, to the extent that people are paying attention, which is still relatively low, um, is of an awareness and of an understanding that the the legacy corporate media are liars. And if there's one thing that people get out of it like that is an incredible shift in tone and expectation i mean it's one thing for congress to have a bad approval rating that's been perennial since you know almost my entire lifetime 
But it's another thing for people to say, hey, I'm, I'm done with this. And combined with, let's say, um, cord cutting, like people aren't paying for the cable subscriptions. Not that the financial stuff matters. These are just, uh, like you said, um, in terms of the Leviathan, one, uh, one arm of the beast, which feeds itself from other places. Like those individual businesses don't need to be profitable. That's not, that's not the point for these people. Right. But what we, what we do see is, uh, is a scenario where the tide does seem in the ebb and flow, the tide seems to be turning ever so slightly. And obviously what we need to compare this to is, well, where would we be under different circumstances? And there are plenty of different scenarios that you could play out where it would, we would hypothet- hypothetically be in a better situation. That's very true. There's also plenty of scenarios that were extraordinarily probable two years ago where we would be in a much, much worse situation. And the question is, given that, given that layout, that we we've seen a variety of different things materialize and if you're paying attention to just one of them then you're going to miss the rest but if you pay attention to everything then it almost seems like you miss everything because it's just too much of a whirlwind it's like trying to you know pick out a, a particular a particular piece of driftwood that's being tossed around by a hurricane but when we're when we're in this mode, when we're in this mindset, in this in this hot summer, when we see this conflict, when we see people people taking to the streets and just shouting other people down and beating other people up and just assaulting, and then we don't see uh, or we continue to not see the kind of justice that that we need to see to be satisfied, then the question is, well, what happens next and what is what is our responsibility? Uh, unfortunately, Joe, I don't know the exact answer to, to what happens next or or maybe it's fortunate that I don't. I don't I don't know. <laughs> well, Steve, but what I, yeah, go it, ahead. It, it's uh, you're making tons of great points here and I haven't jumped in. Uh, uh, because you're just you're you're on a roll here, but you know what it boils down to, at least in my mind, and, and whether uh, how will you work this out uh, in your own spiritual walk is up to each and every one an individual person. But uh, it, it's either this way: I we either die fighting to to restore and and to save this country and uh, this republic, or we die because we didn't fight. Uh, to save it that's how and however that works out however people deal with that that's at least what i've got to boil down to and it it is uh you know we have uh, so much going on as you said the hyper emotionalism you have people dialed in uh you know like the, the and don't get me wrong i know a lot of people out there still like the q uh stuff but to me that's just all uh, a distraction and then even a lot of the, the daily news headlines we read are all distractions. And when you keep zooming out uh, you, and you see the system that's that's uh, continuing to move full speed ahead uh, into implementation, regardless of Trump or, or anybody else, um, you know, and we're, and we're going head first. And uh, it's just very concerning. And, and you mentioned uh, the psalm you read. I wanted to make this point because uh, when you read that part about, you know, a, a hatred uh, the righteous hatred and the hatred of God's enemies. I, I covered a story before you came on Michelle Wolf and her Netflix special. There's a piece up on the Western Journal I put up on Hagman Report. She says, God bless abortions. She had a show celebrating uh, uh, the murdering of babies. And she said a number of very just terrible things. But, uh, you know, how do you deal with that on a personal level? Do you seek revenge or do you let God deal with it? Uh, and, and these are some of the moral things that, that go behind that thinking. But what what really bothers me is, Everything even that President Trump is doing that is actually going to help this country is being uh, uh, given to the uh, American people through the media. It's, it's, it's given the narrative that it is harming uh, democracy. It's harming America. It's harming the way of life. And the people that that is, is uh, hurting and, and spiritually deceiving in the process, that's what really bothers me. And this Michelle Wolf, it's not so much that she says, says God bless abortions. It's the, the fact that she has a position uh, to have a TV show that will air this nonsense and the people that will be deceived by her message. That's where my, my real anger lies with. I mean, there's only so much we can control as a, on an individual level, but, uh, the real question is, and, and as we were just talking about, you know, how do we resolve these issues on a human and spiritual uh, level with everything that we're dealing with as being humans, but having to also live by spiritual principles. 
Yeah, well, that's one of the archetypal questions of our day. And I would say as a as a call to action that one thing we can do is refuse to support Netflix, the company right. that that broadcasts that um to be honest, it's it's just it's filth, and it is one of those things that is meant to be deliberately provocative for a variety of different purposes in order to rile up uh, people with all sorts of different ideological dispositions uh, on this uh, on that contentious issue and that that particular front. The linguistics and the and the semantics matter, but ultimately, you know, everyone will give account for everything that they say. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I uh, I turned. I just opened up my Netflix account. I said I was going to do this yesterday. That I was going to desubscribe, and I'm going to do it right now while I'm while I'm thinking about it. But yeah, I mean, this well, is there you what go. We have to one, do. one one step at a time. And you mentioned something, Joe, that you had boiled it down to like, are we going to stand? Like, is is it for all? Is it for all the marbles? And I would I would say that yeah, it is, and it always is. That's that's the trick. That if we're ever convinced that it's not then we've been lulled into a false sense of security. And what we're seeing is that, you know, uh, everyone everyone seems to be playing for keeps on the other side, and they're creating an illusion of greater effectiveness and greater consensus and everything else like that. And to a certain extent, that's effective. But that kind of sorcery, and I mean that quasi-literally, is wearing off on a variety of different people who basically I think they may have miscalculated the Overton window kind of thing. I think they went a little bit too far, a little bit too fast. And so the disconnect is becoming too great for many people to bear. Uh, certain certain people will continue to you know march on march to the beat of the drum. But ultimately when we're talking about our spiritual lives and those kind of affairs, uh, Joe for for on the objective um our podcast network one of the, the key messages that is our I mean it's not a slogan cuz we don't do that but uh, one one clever phrase he came up with was die to yourself and live as a hero or live for yourself and die as a coward. So Many people, when you look at the Gospels and you look at Jesus saying, Who, whosoever is seeking to save their own life will will lose it. And, you know, you can read that at uh, an almost unlimited variety of different levels. But the the real point is this. Are we going to take responsibility and, and be active? Are we going to give up? the selfish ambitions and plans that we have not that all ambition is bad not that all plans are bad but are we willing to put our effort and put our time into things that are constructive on behalf of other people on behalf of our children on behalf of our country on behalf of the kingdom of god ultimately or are we going to simply uh, bottle ourselves up with with all of our exigent frustrations and and everything else like that and are we just kind of going to let it go by and Steve, and the question is it's it's difficult the media we both agree that the media and what they are doing is completely evil and it is it is dividing our country it is leaving people deceived uh and and in a in a state of uh a mental illness almost if you will would you agree that uh, i guess finding a, a way to charge them uh and arrest them for whatever it is, treason, sedition, uh, being an enemy of the American people. Would you agree with that? Like if, a, if a, even, a, say, 10,000 people stormed each uh, uh, media outlet and, placed, and detained the people responsible, uh, you know, for, for the lying, the constant lying and propaganda. I mean, what, how could we make that work? I mean, and, and unless that happens, and unless that happens among these multiple institutions, nothing is really going to change. Uh, no matter what we do, how much we yell or, or, or get frustrated. Right. So there's obviously some nuances in terms of this kind of discussion. What I would say is that none of nothing that we're talking about should be construed as a, a call to violence or, or anything no. else like that. Vigilante justice and, and the like. We're, we're speaking hypothetically about what scenarios might end up playing out. And for me, what I would say is that you run into a bit of difficulty here because, of course, under the previous administration, the media is allowed to lie. I mean, there's no there isn't technically a, a, a vehicle for them to 
you know, be prosecuted directly for misleading information. However, there are certainly different ways that this can be impacted. The problem is it kind of feels like because of your act accurate leviathan analogy that you have to take care of everything else in order to take take care of this like do you strike at the do you strike at the finances to undercut it well there's just you know there's kind of there's kind of too much um obviously that would that would be a significant blow do you go right for the media they'll just pop up you know it's it'll be uh, hydra style it'll pop up something else and the resources will shift to other different ngos and more personalities will be invented and everything else like that um but what you can certainly take solace in is that your your program and and your network is just as influential if not more influential because of the quality of, and caliber of content as well as the time and the the overall amount of content that you're producing it, way more impactful than many of these legacy uh corporate mainstream media um approaches and you know it, it just wouldn't be quite as publicized because it's literally a different a different group you just you know certain outlets just get written off um, by by certain by certain groups and then attacked and polarized and everything else like that. So there is a giant PR battle, and that is the that is the role that the that the legacy media plays in terms of uh, just being a facilitation arm of the deep state and intelligence agencies and everything else like that. Uh, I would imagine that our listeners are familiar with the Project Mockingbird kind of status, and so you know these people will lie for deliberate targeted purposes with reckless abandon without without fear of consequence. And then the question is, well, how do you hold these people accountable? Well, and I wouldn't start the, with the media, uh, just to be clear. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. That no, I, I, I get it. It's but like there are groups where you could uh, have that 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 whole societal change if what they were uh, removed from the equation, whether detained or uh, however that looks. Uh, but it definitely wouldn't start with the me- with the media. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, but you made no, a great ab- point absolutely. Earlier, that the profit yeah. model uh, for these institutions doesn't even matter because the money is always there. It's 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 a guarantee. It's not. If CNN had to stand on its own profitability, uh, it would have died a long time ago. And we we understand that though. So yeah, if you, if you dried up the black market trades in drugs and people and everything else like that, then you would take away a whole bunch of a whole bunch of the actual funding. So. So, you know, it's it's one of those Gordian knots that, you know, if you the desire would be to step right up to it and just cut it in half um, and just away with the whole thing. But the problem is it's so cancerous and integrated into so many parts of you know the lives of decent human beings it would cause a ton of collateral damage and that's part of part of the goal it's like a systemically important uh, financial institution or too big it's too big to fail quote unquote however it is not too big to fail in the eyes of god and so it's only it's only the lord who can properly orchestrate the uh, a plan of attack against this kind of evil and it, it it's his desire for righteousness to be to be restored and so what we need are a we need a dedicated group of people growing and growing and growing in coordinated efforts to pray to take action as we're instructed and led by the holy spirit because you know if we're going to if we're going to trust in any one particular person or any one particular outlet you know it's it's not going to go uh, according to according to plan you know the best laid plans go go to waste <laughs> but if we if we entrust our plans to the lord if we will be sincere and if we are do if we will do our part even understanding that we may not see uh, we may not see everything come to fruition in the course of our actions or even potentially in the course of our lifetimes because this is a this is a permanent battle yeah. um, at least until the end of this age so uh, that's that's what I would that's what I would say uh, Joe ultimately you know when, if we try and brainstorm about what to do and this and that various tactics ultimately yeah, we have to so allow far. our paths to be guided by the Lord because he will as Psalm 139 says uh, lead us in the way everlasting and we know that the wicked and evil is a temporary thing and we have to be forgiven for our own sins forgiving those who trespass against us unifying with one another regardless of our disagreements about my about minor things and we have to press into the lord because it's you know only only god only god could overthrow the kind of evil that we're faced with today 
Amen. And that takes us right up to the end of the show. Stephen, I want to thank you so much. Uh, you added a, a whole bunch, uh, a whole lot to think about to the conversation and uh, has definitely made it a much better show. So I, I thank you for your time today and we will uh, see you back here next week. God bless you, man. Thanks. My pleasure, Joe. God bless. All right, that'll do it for us today. We'll be back here tomorrow at the same time. Don't forget Hagman Report tonight at 7. And our sponsor, simplycleanfoods.net, promo code SIMPLYCLEAN. Have a great day. The Hagman Daily Show is brought to you by The Hagman Report. Tune in to The Hagman Report weekdays, 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time. For more information, go to HagmanReport.com. That's HagmanReport.com.